This gun sucks. I said that and the thing fell over pretty much at the same time. I, okay, I need to give some context. As I have said in a few videos, I, I don't know if those videos are even public yet, my favorite series in Nerf has always been, and to this day is, the Mega series. I love Mega Blasters. I absolutely love them. There's just something so magical about taking a normal size blaster and shooting a gigantic chunky dart out of it. It's just, it's magical. It's so wonderful. And that's why I love the Mega XL so much. Plus, my favorite color is red, so every single blaster being red just made me appreciate them a little bit more. And when I saw that they were going to release a Mega Strife that looks like this, oh boy, there was some yelling going on in my studio room. My excitement was immeasurable. It looks so cool. It comes with a 10 dart mega magazine. Look how big this magazine is for a 10 dart magazine. It uses the same system as the Centurion, so I could actually have a magazine that works with the Centurion outside of the Centurion mag. And likewise, put the Centurion mag in this. The foregrip looks comfy. The main grip looks comfy. The stock is the perfect length. It's just... Oh man, I was way too excited for this. And at a retail price of $40, I mean, it was the ideal price point for something like this. When I saw it in stores, I, my eyes turned into stars. I was just like, oh, it's so cool looking. It's so big and badass. I wanted it so bad. And then I bought it. And I bought it along with the Dino Squad one. So that's just a sign of disappointment. And I mean, come on, the Dino Squad one isn't really that bad. It's, it looks the same. <laughs> you really put them side by side, but it's just an ungodly expensive strife with Hobbit proportions. This one has the benefit of the doubt. It shoots mega darts. So how does it fare? Well, before we get into the crushing disappointment, let's talk about the stuff that I actually love about this blaster. First off, just the look of this. I mean... <laughs> from both sides even, even without the paint on the other side, this blaster looks absolutely beautiful. It is a wonderful, wonderful looking blaster. The flywheels are so thick that they're coming out of the shell and only on one side, so it is a bit asymmetrical, but it doesn't really impede how this thing looks. The grip, look at this pattern that they came up with for the grip. That is interesting. And the grip itself is very, very comfortable. The rev trigger, ugh. Oh, Lord heavens, no. But we'll get to that in a minute. The main magazine release is, oh, Lord heavens, no. But we'll get to that in a minute, too. The main trigger, questionable. But, yeah, we'll talk about the triggers and stuff before the firing demo. The stock is a little bit shorter than I would like, but it is extremely comfortable. And having the batteries back here in the stock means that the weighting of this big heavy blaster is actually balanced. And this is something that I talked about before in my Ultra One review, which still is not public, but don't worry, you guys will see that soon. Um, the, but the blaster is very balanced. So is this one. The foregrip is very, very comfortable. Look at this smooth, ergonomic, very nice, premium-feeling handhold. On a lot of flywheelers, they botch the front handhold because, well, it's a flywheel blaster, which means all the weighting is just around the grip. That is not true. And the foregrip can be the killer for a lot of these kinds of blasters. But no, they remembered to put effort into it this time. I also just realized that interesting little pattern is a bunch of tiny little Mega M's. Look at that. That is adorable. I love that. And just like most blasters of this kind of proportion, it has a carry handle that is extremely back heavy and really doesn't serve any purpose at all. Because if you're going to be carrying this, you're probably just going to be carrying it like this and walking around with it in the room. So yeah, that's kind of useless. And it's got sling points right up at the top. Not on the bottom, but it's not really that big of a deal. At least you have two functional sling points. And it does just for good measure, have attack rail so you can attach your scope. If you don't want a scope, it's got iron sights. And if you're using mega darts that fly straight, which this blaster did not come with, you could actually hit something. So that's interesting. Now let's get into the crushing disappointment. The magazine loading is... Oh, God. It's rough. It feels like it's not meant to go in there and the blaster is actively fighting back against you loading the magazine in. And that's the case with the Centurion Mag 2. Come on. 
Come on. Come on! Oh, oh my goodness! Ugh. I recorded that on purpose. Ugh. At least it looks good. You're never gonna use the Centurion mag in this. It's a semi-automatic flywheeler. But even if you wanted to, this magazine release is horrible! It has way too many little fiddly bits on the inside and a plastic spring, which means that it is the most annoying kind of thing to pull back in the first place. Let's talk about the rev trigger. This is the worst rev trigger I have ever seen! Ever! No blaster has a worse rev trigger than this one. It has a heavy plastic spring on the inside that is right behind where your finger is going to go, which means that pulling it back is just, oh, it's a colossal pain. And it actually stresses out my middle finger after less than five minutes of using it. It's just so difficult to pull that trigger back. And the detector that actually indicates whether or not the trigger is pulled back does not activate unless it's all the way pulled down. You guys do not want to know how many countless hundreds of times I have accidentally stopped revving the blaster or just had the trigger lock go off too early because the rev trigger is so hard to keep held down that I unintentionally depressed it too much to get it to work. Watch! So I'm pulling it down, it goes on, the trigger lock's still there. Once it's all the way pulled down, you can pull it when it gets to about here, that's it. Trigger lock is still up even though it's revving, has to be fully pulled down, just so that you can fire the blaster. Why Hasbro, why did you do this to me? I was so excited for this blaster. The actual main trigger is super nice and smooth and responsive and clicky, even though, oh, people have had problems with this and I'll get into that later, but, yeah, how can they make such a good main trigger and both of the other ones are so horrendously bad that it almost renders the blaster unusable? I don't understand. I don't understand. An example of a good rev trigger and probably the best rev trigger on any blaster I've seen is the Modulus Strife. An old classic. Everybody knows what the Strife is. This rev trigger is wonderful. Watch this. You have the trigger with your finger on it. When you pull it down, it's difficult but then it clicks, and once it's down, you don't have to put nearly as much pressure on it to keep it held down. The trigger's held down already, and it's easy to hold. When you release your finger, it springs back out. A clicky rev trigger like that is important for things like this, because if you depress the rev trigger, it's got a trigger lock that keeps it from revving. The same thing goes with the Moto Strike, but they used a plastic spring with no clips on the trigger, just to make it as annoying as possible. What the hell? And if you want any more evidence, well, here's one with a plastic spring. The Phoenix. The Phoenix works pretty much the same. It has the same kind of plastic spring mechanism, but watch. It clicks, just like the Strife's trigger. I mean, I mean, I love the Phoenix, but come on. Why? Why didn't they do why did they do it with the Phoenix and they didn't do it with the Moto Strike? The Phoenix released at the same time! Oh, oh, you thought that's where it was over. Oh, I'm not done. I'm never done. I still have more to talk about. You know how with flywheel blasters, there is usually a little bit of variation in the flywheels, especially when you haven't touched it in a long time. Well. Wouldn't you like to know how much variation is on this blaster? There is no consistency. One shot will shoot maybe 15 feet away. The next shot will actually shoot 75 feet like the original Elite claims made. And then the third shot after that will shoot 20 feet. And it just makes no sense. It's so bad that you can hear the variation in the flywheels constantly changing between shots. Listen close. Look how fast they're spinning now. 
We're actually getting good performance. And I'm empty. That is not even discussing the time it takes for the flywheels to spin back up again. It's atrocious. For comparison, here's another mega flywheeler, the Mastodon, which is a beautiful blaster that I absolutely love. Listen to this one in comparison. Waiting for full rev up time, that's how long it takes. Like, like, there's practically no variation in this, and this is a mega blaster. The darts are humongous that it's trying to fire. A long rev up time for a flywheel blaster is a terrible detriment to it, because when you're using flywheels, you want to be using them fast. You don't want to fire a shot and then have to sit there for 15 seconds while it revs up again as slowly as possible before you can fire it again and everybody knows where you are because everybody has to listen to <clears throat> while they're waiting for you to shoot. Like, when I was using the Moto Blitz or the Strife or any other flywheel, you are going to want to pull this thing and pull it at least five times just to make sure that you hit your target. If you try to do that with the Moto Strike, only your first shot is going to make it near them. Any other shot, and they're, they're just going to fall flat. And they're going to keep falling flatter and flatter as you, as you shoot more because the flywheels aren't revving up at all. I mean... The, the, the Mastodon did it so much better. The Mastodon is almost flawless, and this one did it in 2015. A massive, heavy $80 blaster that I have been running for seven years straight should not be working better than a one-year-old, brand-new blaster from the same line and from the same company. I mean, watch. I'm going to do five-round burst with the Moto Strike, just so you can see. Ready? We have to wait for the motors. Did you see that? The last two shots didn't even reach the target. The target is less than 10 steps away. <sighs> so, the Mega Moto Strike. When I saw this blaster, I was beyond excited, and after I used it, I was vindicated. This thing brought up my expectations, and then just thrashed them to bits. <laughs> and the shell is so good. You could use this shell for all sorts of stuff. It's very nice. The plastic is just as thick as any other Mega Blaster. The quality is there, but the performance and just the usability of this is, it's useless. You're never going to use this in a war. There's no way to use this in a war. Oh yeah, the trigger. I still got stuff to say about it. Wouldn't you like to know how many reviews I saw of this blaster where they said that the trigger spring was so weak that it did not push it back forwards after firing a dart? What in the hell kind of quality control is that? This blaster works fine, and I've seen other people's work fine, but other people's, just they just don't work. The trigger just doesn't work. And having a commercial product that you cannot guarantee will work exactly the same way for every single person is inexcusable. Yeah, sure, there will be lemons out there. It happens with everything. Why did it happen to so many people then? It's the same thing as saying the warden broke. Yes, it did. But there was a reason for that. I mean, people just weren't using it right. And quite frankly, they shouldn't have to. But I'm not going to talk about that today. But... This is not something that you can fix by breaking it in. That is a problem where if it's there at start, it will be there forever. That's, that's inexcusable. This blaster is terrible. Please do not buy it. Please wait and get a Mastodon instead. Even though the Mastodon is so much bigger and heavier, it is so many times better than the Moto Strike as a mega flywheeler that you will not ever regret not having bought a Mega Moto Strike. If you want a Mega Moto Strike for your collection or you want to modify it or do something with it, then yeah, sure, it's a good shell. Anybody can do anything with anything. But if you're just looking for a stock blaster to use as a Mega Flywheeler, get this one. The one from 2015. It's so much better. And that's my recommendation for the Mega Moto Strike. Buy the Mega Mastodon. 
and don't buy the Megamoto Strike. Because if I do tell you to buy the Megamoto Strike, I am literally promoting gambling. Because I can't guarantee if your blaster is going to work when you buy it. And if it doesn't work when you buy it, too bad. You've already wasted $40 on this. And even if it does work, you've seen what the performance is. Thank you for watching. If for some bizarre reason you want to purchase a Mega Moto Strike, a purchase link will be in the description. So you can go ahead and waste your money if you really want to, but for anybody else, I will also have a purchase link to a Mastodon in the description. It might be more expensive because it's close to Christmas time, but it is so much more worth it. Thanks for watching. See you.